Previously on Paulus. Is Lana fucking hot? I just binged over 32 hours of small game. Please, guys, please, like and subscribe. Season 3, done. Season 4, done. And yes, I heard all your comments asking for the next video. Duh, I was hoping to see reviews of future seasons, but you keep doing watch longs. Listen here, you entitled little sh. But alas, the video is here. Let's get into Season 3 and 4 of Smallville. Somebody save me! So back in Season 2, we left off with Clark putting on the red kryptonite ring and leaving Smallville and everyone he loves behind. And now, he's bad Clark! I love the first two episodes of this season. It feels like an entirely different show. We get to see Clark abuse his powers and become a vigilante. We get to see Metropolis, which is a welcome change to the more simple town of Smallville. And we also get to see some really heart-wrenching moments from Clark. Like when he takes off the ring and calls home. And we even get Super Jonathan. Son, you're coming home with me. Now. Oh, this is so good! And then bada bing, bada boom, Clark breaks the ring, comes to his senses, and returns home. And the show kind of becomes regular Smallville again. Clark and Lana are broken up again because of bad Clark. Lex survives his plane crash and his castaway dilemma, Jonathan loses his powers, the kids all go back to school, and the freaks start showing up again. But I can't help but feel the premiere set too high of a bar that just going back to regular Smallville became a little underwhelming sometimes. We get your Freak of the Week shenanigans again with the only notable freaks in my opinion being Joseph from episode 12 Hereafter, Alicia from episode 14 Obsession, Can you eat pussy like that? and Chloe herself in episode 18, Truth. Wow. We also had non-freaks who were pretty good like Van McNulty from episode 3, Extinction, and Perry from episode 5. Now in terms of our characters, where are they all this season? Clark gets super hearing this season. And we also find out that Jor-El, who happens to look identical to him, came to Earth 40 years ago and made friends with Jonathan's father. Which means that the meteor shower was no accident and the Kents were chosen to receive Clark. Clark. Lex has a mental breakdown this season and we find out exactly why Lionel and him have such a tense relationship in the absolutely brilliant episode 19 Memoria. Spoilers, Lex's mom went insane and killed his baby brother but Lex took the blame for it. What have you done? What have you done? Oh wow! In the finale, Clark also finds Lex's sex dungeon. I mean obsession room with all his findings on Clark. But here's the thing, Lex never ends up confronting Clark about his findings. Ever. He's right there in front of you. Get an answer from him. Clark this season is also a bit of a hypocrite. He gets mad at Lex in his words. Yes, I really don't have to explain myself to you, Clark. Yes, you do, Lex. Because I can't understand why my best friend keeps lying to me. But he himself has been lying to Lex for even longer. Come on Clark, you little jerk. Midway through the season, we get Adam, played by the vampire sex symbol himself, Ian Summerholder. Hello, brother. 
He was introduced as a sort of pseudo antagonist and essentially a Whitney replacement to cockblock Clark and Lana again. But we find out that he was actually a corpse resurrected by Lionel Luther to spy on Clark to learn his secret. Now, why did I say pseudo antagonist? Because he literally did nothing. He shows up, tricks the audience into thinking he'll be a threat, and then he dies a few episodes later. Like, what? What was he there for? It really feels like the writers had no idea what to do with him. Such wasted potential too, especially because Ian Summerholder was actually a pretty good actor here. Lana spends the first half of the season pining over Clark but then she gets fed up with him and decides to move to Paris near the end of the season. Oh, and Lex and Lana start having some really weird touchy-touchy moments. Don't do it, Lex! She's only 17! And the season finale was bonkers. Pete leaves Smallville, Lionel goes to jail, Chloe dies. Possibly. Jonathan dies. Possibly. Lex is poisoned and Clark gets kidnapped by Jor-El. Everyone loses! You bloody, bloody bastard. bastard! How do OG watchers survive the wait for the next season if it ends like this? Yo, comment below if you're an OG watcher. Tell me what it's like when you saw this finale live on TV. Anyway, problems aside, this was a pretty solid season. It gave you more Smallville and that's what the fans want, you know, more Smallville. Uh, season 4 probably the worst season story-wise so far. And the one character whose development suffers the most is Lana. What? After moving to Paris, they really had nothing for her to do. You can tell because they gave her this witch subplot that was largely unrelated to what every other character was going through. Oh, oh you, you see her hand, yeah? yeah? She I'm casting a spell, man! <laughs> Fucking witchy bitch! They also introduced another Whitney replacement, Jason, who literally serves the purpose of the past <laughs> boyfriends. I didn't care for him and was never for a second invested in what he was doing in the story. I think they should just stop trying to introduce new boyfriends for Lana at this point. It just doesn't work. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times. Bloody fuck you, bloody! The main plot of this season is actually Clark gathering the three stones. Did someone say stone? <laughs> to unlock the true secret of the caves and his destiny, which could actually be a cool, you know, Indiana Jones type adventure, but it's so drip fed to you across the season you can't get invested enough to care. I will say however, there are two bright spots in this season. The first is that in my opinion, this season features the best character moments ever in the show so far. Like Chloe telling an amnesiac Clark that if she knew his secret, she would never betray him. Well, we must have been pretty good friends if I trusted you with all this. Yeah, well, actually, you didn't. A lot of people would betray you if they knew. But you wouldn't, would you? Never. My heart. Or when Clark races the Flash and we see him for the first time struggle to keep up. and Clark giving up football, his scholarship, and essentially his dream in this amazing scene with no dialogue. However, as if yin and yang were in effect, for as much amazing character moments we get, we also get a couple of absolute laugh out loud moments. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> And finally, by far the best thing about this season, the one thing I'm pretty sure even longtime fans of the show unanimously agree the best thing about season 4 is... Hi Mrs. Kent. She 
She's brash, she's rude, she's strong. She was sassy and really gave some levity to the show that was sorely needed. She's just such a breath of fresh air. I think the show writer Jeff Loeb on the recent Talkville podcast said it best. And my favorite thing about season four was bringing in Lois. Erica just had fun. And she was very different than any other voice in the show. Yep. Catherine Hepburn and Cary Grant, that it was that kind of sort of funny, silly stuff that you guys could say to each other. I would gladly trade Jason and Pete for one Lois Lane all day, every day. Overall, season four is a stinker. Despite the great moments, there was just too much I didn't really care for this season. Please like and subscribe and I'd really appreciate it if you leave a comment below too. Thanks for watching everyone, that's the video and peace.